joining us now, House Judiciary's ranking member. He's Congressman Jim Jordan. Congressman, it's a pleasure to see you again. Thanks for coming Good on. Good to be with you. So you what, you. what exactly will House Republicans do about this? What are you going to do? I mean, voters have been worried about all, all this. Yeah. They keep hearing you're going to hold people to account, but that never seems right. to happen. Well, step one in holding people accountable and stopping this behavior in the future is actually yeah, get all the facts out there. But that feels meaningless. Well, right, but because I can't. No, no, I, right, I can't. You know, you know, Liz. I can't prosecute anyone. The only, only the Justice Department can. But if you highlight what they've done, you have a better chance of stopping it. And so that's our constitutional duty in the legislative branch, and we're going to focus on that. So, uh, yeah, we. Uh, here's one. Here's one question I have. This Elvis Chan, a, a guy who was working at the FBI, who was doing these weekly briefings in the run up to the 2020 election. I want to talk to him and ask him, did you talk to Jim Baker? You're out there in San Francisco and Northern California. Did you have meetings with Jim Baker? Did Jim Baker get a readout of what you messages and, and information you convey to Twitter and other uh, social media platforms? I think that's a great place to start. We're going to okay. talk to Elvis Chan. We've sent a letter to the Justice Department asking to talk to him. When we get in the majority, okay. I think we'll you know, have that because, opportunity. You know, as MSNBC and CNN, they focus on everything else. The New York Times focuses on everything else that, you know, about Trump or the Capitol riots, this is the First Amendment violation, Congressman. Yep. It's the FBI. It is the FBI stepping in and dictating what, you know, is said on social media. So what are FBI whistleblowers saying? I mean, James Baker shows up at Twitter five months before the 2020 election after yeah. he was a top FBI Democrat guy on debunk Trump Russia, Michael Flynn, Hillary Clinton campaigns, FBI contact yeah. to get the debunked Trump Russia Alpha Bank story in. I mean, so you know what I mean? So this is No, I know. This is the First Amendment violation. And this well, is a, this is the bedrock of what a US of what democracy is. It's about the First Amendment, period. Right. And now we're learning the central player is a guy who, when he was at the FBI as chief counsel, he was involved in the Trump Russia spying, all that, all that baloney. He was the guy that took the information from Zussman, Clinton's lawyer, about the Alpha Bay, uh, Bank hoax and, and scam. Then he goes to Twitter, suppresses the information in 2020. Right, but what are FBI whistleblowers that, telling you? Sorry, this is this is serious stuff. What are FBI, FBI whistleblowers telling you? They're telling me what I was just describing is represents the hierarchy of the FBI. And one whistleblower, one FBI agent who came to us as a whistleblower said, rotten at the core, at the Washington field office, at the upper echelons of the FBI. That's what they're telling us. Not one, multiple whistleblowers have told us that. One whistleblower who went to Senator Grassley said this individual, Timothy Tebalt, who was a top official at the Washington field office in the FBI, is the guy who was partially responsible for suppressing the Hunter Biden story. We had a different whistleblower, mention that same name and say he was also an agent who was who was pressuring uh, other agents to label all cases as domestic violence extremists. So politics runs rampant at the Washington field office. That's what we got to uncover. Get all the facts out there so that we can change it and stop it. All right. So we've got a new lawsuit. It reveals government documents that show Twitter also set up a back door for government officials in the CDC to track Twitter posts in the pandemic to stop disinformation. This comes from the America First Legal Group uh, yesterday. Yeah. We know there's bad information about things like, you know, vaccines putting microchips in people. That doesn't happen. But, you know, this is, again, the government stepping in. I mean, Barry Weiss, at Substack congressman, she's going right. to get the second release of Twitter files this Friday. Good. Her jaw reportedly hit the floor when she found out it was Jim Baker vetting the Twitter files filtered. and there was yeah. a delay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, it's, it's that bad. This this collusion of big tech, big media, big government to keep information from we the people. I said this earlier, but it was actually a colleague of mine who said a couple months ago, when is the FBI just going to stay out of elections and let we the people decide? Because yeah. remember, 2016, it was Trump Russia. 2018, it was the Mueller investigation. 2020, it was suppression of the Hunter Biden story. 2022, 91 days before the midterm elections, yeah. they raid President Trump's home. And now, just two weeks ago, three days after he announces he's running, what are they and doing? You know, they a special counsel you, to harass him. It's, it's so a, that's five elections in a row. Listen, it's the it's the complicity of the media, too. Remember Senator yeah. Chuck Schumer going on Rachel Maddow's show with MSNBC that the U.S. intelligence community can get you every way every which way from, Six Sunday, ways from Sunday and, nev and never push back on that. The FBI is part of the government. Again, that's a First Amendment crisis. We hear you. Yep. But let's listen to Democrat Congressman Ro Khanna on this. Watch this. Look, no one is saying, at least I'm not saying, that any of the sensational 
pictures or photographs concerning Hunter Biden should be out there. That's not what this was about. This was about a journalist a, at the New York Post writing an article about the situation. And there's no justification for suppressing that. Even if the source of that had gotten that information through something that was hacked, that, that was the case of the Pentagon Papers. And so the FBI should explain uh, what they were doing and what the rationale was. Uh, I certainly hope that and, and expect that they weren't trying to do it uh, to, to bias Twitter against, for, against uh, or for a particular candidate. That's Democrat Ro Khanna. You can't pass yeah. this off as, oh, this is naked pictures of Hunter Biden. No. It's about the laptop detailing how the Biden right. family was cashing in on Joe Biden's name, selling access to Russia and China right. and Kazakhstan and more. Go ahead. And, and Liz, remember the context. You had 51 former Intel officials, Clapper, Brennan, and 40, 49 others who signed that letter that says this has all the earmarks of a Russian misinformation operation. Baloney, it was true. So when, when the FBI comes in weekly and talks to these social media platforms, with that being the context, of course they're going to keep that information from getting to we the people, again, just days before the most important election we have. That's the problem. The, 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 here's the situation now with Democrats. They don't believe in the First Amendment. Democrats now say, if you, don't, if you don't agree with me, you're not supposed to talk, you're not supposed to share information, and if you do, we're going to call you all kinds of names. That's what, or we're going to suppress it, and that's what happened here. It's so dangerous for the democracy. Congressman Jordan, we thank you for bringing it to light. We'll have you back on again soon. It's good to see you.